I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. This piano is a glorious, wonderful instrument that uh, I'm really excited to have here in the shop. Um, and it's from the, the golden age of Baldwin. This is a nine foot piano. And incidentally, I actually have two pianos in my home. This is one of them. I have a Highland 161, and I have this very model of Baldwin. Mine is slightly older, but this is, this is a 1970. And, and like I said, golden age of Baldwin, uh, and, and nine foot, like it doesn't get any better than that. So uh, I actually wanted to start this video here to, to just kind of give you a feel for its size. We totally refinished it and it's super, super beautiful. Um, these larger pianos, it's kind of uh, uh, bittersweet, I guess, when, when these pianos go because, because they're so glorious that I love having them here. But at the same time, I also, of course, love to I love to sell them, and I love to see um, see the the new the new uh, buyer get blessed by them as well. So, um, just a quick a quick kind of uh, history lesson on on Baldwin. There were really two pianos that uh, that by uh, the outbreak of World War II that um, in the United States anyway, two pianos that were really kind of vying for the top position in the United States. And, but it was, it was really the German pianos that were, that were the world-class, very best, Bosendorfer and Sauter and, and those kinds of, those, those pianos over in, in Germany. And then of course, after, after World War I, and then especially after World War II, all, all of those kinds of luxury industries like the piano industry were kaput. And so the world stage turned to the United States, the only area, the only piano producing area that was untouched by the war. And it was kind of Baldwin and Steinway, the, the two competitors. And so post-war 1945, 1946, um, through, a, you know, Steinway is a great piano. I don't want to take away anything from that, but I also don't want to detract from Baldwin. They were there. They were absolutely were, were every bit as much of a piano as, as Steinway was. And through, uh, well, luck of the draw in part, there were other factors as well. Steinway kind of won out and, and university professors, they were learning, they started to learn on Steinway. And then through the 50s, that was the only piano that, I mean, that, that kind of became in their minds and, in, and then in the piano community mind, that became the piano that you have to have as a Steinway. But piano technicians know that pianos from this era, the, like I said, the golden age of Baldwin, which, which in my opinion extends probably back to 1920, probably even further, and extends well into the 1980s. Um, so this one being a 1970 is right in there. Um, and in fact, maybe even ideal, where, where it's, it's from that era but not so old that, uh, that you start to have issues associated with age. Um, although this, and this piano has been refurbished nonetheless and totally refinished, it's, uh, I, hope, I hope it's kind of coming through in the video. It's absolutely beautiful. This, this kind of satiny semi-gloss finish looks amazing. Let's get a shot also of the, um, the pedals and the casters. So obviously the, the bigger the better in the world of pianos. Um, and this one is big. It is a monster. And it's not it's not just volume. Volume it's nice to have access to volume if you want, but you can play just as pianissimo on, on this big piano as you can on a on a smaller piano. But you also have that extra, if you want it, you have that extra um, power at the at the high end if you if you want to blast someone out of the room you could this one is very uh bright and powerful touch is great i've had i've had quite a few people that are that are high-end players that have that have tried it and and give it um very very high marks which um of course i already knew that but uh it's always nice to have some additional um uh People agree with you, especially when these people know what they're doing. Uh, so lots, lots of work has been done, like uh, other than refinishing. So, so the keys have been redone. Of course, the, the casters are new, and the pedals 
have been have been polished. The hammers have been reshaped. The whole piano has been been regulated, lubricated, aligned. Everything's um, very very clean on the inside. Regulation is everything from um, ensuring that the keys are level to ensuring that the distance you can depress the key is the correct distance. Ensuring that that distance there that you're seeing in the video is correct where it goes up to the string and then at the last possible moment it kind of pop sort of pulls away from the string that's proper regulation and the distance that it what's called drop the drop uh, is the correct distance um, anyway that's uh, there's about a dozen others or or more let's not play right now okay Lewis um, that's telling about so, this piano. Uh, Anyway, that, that's the story of the piano. This, this piano, uh, brand new, and, and others like it. These are nine-foot pianos generally. These are, um, these are 80, 100, $120,000, $150,000 pianos. If you get into some of the, the, the brands that, uh, that have um, uh, really kind of taken off in, in terms of prestige in the last... A uh, few years or last couple decades or so, pianos a nine foot piano is going to be um, 150 plus 200 even. So uh, that's the kind of that's the kind of comparison that we're looking at. And in this one, let's get to it. In the, in the very low end, where on, on most pianos, when you get down here, it ceases to, to really be musical. It's more of just kind of a, uh, I don't know, it's, it almost sounds thuddy, but on a piano this size, you just have this rich, deep growl that is, well, there again, it's musical. something really loud. blast people out of the room if you want to but you Fine. can also play something I'll, very I'll push it down Okay, so there you have it. This piano is absolutely awesome. I'm, I'm excited to have it here. I don't often have nine-foot pianos. Occasionally I do. Um, 
So, so this is a welcome addition to to the current collection. Come check it out. I think I think it's super reasonably priced. I think it's an awesome piano. Um, and if you're if you're watching this video out of state, out of the the region, it's not practical to um, come to Utah. Let me know, and um, I'd be I'd be happy to make supplemental videos. Have people that are that are more uh, well versed in classical music, if if that's your thing, or or that are a better jazz player than I am, to come play it for you, whatever you need. Um, and and uh, lot, lots of people do do buy pianos from us out of state, and we ship them all over. So if if that's you, um, I guess just I don't know. Rest assured that uh, that things are as represented, and and we know what we're doing. Very we're very competent here in the shop, um, and that. Uh, yeah, it's good work and a and a great piano that that will last literally many decades here on into the future.